Hello out there, and I've got a couple knife mods for you today, and the one up above the Boker Kihon is actually more of a restoration type of mod, and we'll talk about this one at length, featuring a lot of the heat anno issues that I had in just a minute, but today we are going to start with the Honey Badger. And before I get too deep into anything, I do want to let you guys know that I am working on a couple other mods right now, and I'm filming every aspect of those. And so eventually I will have a pretty long, probably like 30 or 40 minute kind of tutorial video hitting every aspect of all the different types of uh, mods that I do. So that should be interesting. Definitely stay tuned for that if you're looking for more of a how-to. Today though, just going to go through some of the stuff that I did uh, with these knives. Again, starting with this honey badger. And the honey badgers are a lot of fun to do because uh, the mods are pretty straightforward and simple, but the results can be just a... Uh, uh, a good variety of different things that you can do with it, different colors, um, different kind of like finishes on this acid etch and stuff. And uh, this one is for a viewer slash customer, I guess you'd call them. <laughs> Someone who follows me on Instagram and he saw one that I did in the past and said he wanted one exactly like that previous one. And just from a conceptual like kind of point of view, I try to do each one a little bit different um, in one way or another, just so that everybody who has one of these ends up with something a little bit unique to them. And so in this case, you know, the uh, the lining of the, the pattern here, the speckled pattern, is angled a little bit differently than I've done on other ones. Um, same thing with it on the pocket clip. And then the colors are just a little bit different as well. The green, I've done this exact green before, but the backspacer is a shade of like bluish purple, a little bit of blurple, called indigo, <laughs> and I've been looking to try to hit this color with some of my dyes, mixing them in the past, and I finally just went ahead and bought the color indigo writ dye, <laughs> and this color is, it's like perfect for me. I definitely want to use this on like full scales in the future. I just really like this shade of bluish purple, so yeah, I'm going to see a lot more of that moving forward. With the hardware, I did the bronze anno heat anno on the stainless steel hardware here. Came out pretty darn good with the pivots. And then on the uh, the back end, you can see, uh, maybe just because I hadn't done much heat anno in a while, I held it on just a little bit long. So we have like a deeper bronze, almost a purplish on the uh, the hardware back here. And that just happens when you, uh, you know, have it too hot or for too long. And there's a very small window with the um, the small hardware screws in order to capture each color. So, yeah, a little bit darker than I'd like, but overall it was pretty good. The one issue that I always have with these honey badgers is, you know, when you're trying to um, hit the nail polish all around, like the detent ball and the pivot, you know, underside here, and you're trying to make sure that when the knife opens and closes, there's no spots where the nail polish is on that are going to be visible. So, like, there's no spots that are not going to etch that you're going to be able to see when you open and close the knife like this. And, but you also need to make sure that you have the nail polish all the way covering the detent track so that you don't get any kind of grittiness. And I feel like I've gotten a lot better with that, but for some reason, I still get a little bit of grittiness on these honey badgers, like right here. And... You can see closing it, I mean, it's smooth, but there is just a little bit of friction in there that shouldn't be there for some reason, and it's something that I'm just trying to uh, to figure out and explore as I go, just trying to, to figure out what it is instead of looking it up or anything like that, you know, just trial and error is sort of the way that, that I've managed to be able to do the stuff that I do. <laughs> Not that it's that great, but you know, this speckle pattern came about from me just trying to uh, to learn new finishes. I, I still have not figured out how to do a um, like an orange peel kind of texture. And uh, I haven't looked it up, I haven't watched a video, I have just every now and then experiment with other things and that's how I came up with this pattern is just, uh, just experimenting with different bits and uh, speeds on my Dremel tool. So go figure, you know. So hopefully in time I can figure out and work out that process. So we will see, but that is the honey badger. And yeah, moving on to the Kihon. The Kihon, like I said, is more of a restoration kind of, excuse me, kind of effort because this was already modded by my buddy Nick Maffei. Nick Maffei on Instagram, really good guy, uh, king of the mods, king of the writ die fade by far. I mean, just does some really great stuff. 
and he had done this and um, did an acid stone wash on the blade and a little bit of heat anno and then raffled it off or auctioned it, something like that, and I won. Well, the problem with that over time down here in Florida is that D2, regardless of, of whether it's <laughs> um, acid etched, D2 can rust on its own pretty easily. But when you do open up the pores of the steel with that etching, it can make it very easy and susceptible to corrosion. And that's what happened on this blade. And I got to the point where I had to do something else. You know, I couldn't couldn't keep the stone wash the way that it was. You can see there's like some pock marks uh, on the, the steel that just are going to be permanent. So I basically just sanded it down and then polished it. And you can still see the remnants of that acid etch. Like that's never going to go away. And one of the things that's, that's sort of cool about it is I kept some of like the stone wash on the top. So the blade has a little bit of a worn look. I also acid stone wash the frame, stainless steel frame. And that came out pretty good actually. It looks a little bit more aggressive than I originally intended. A little bit of a like color difference here as it fades going to the back. So not the most even etch, but um, for what it is and for just the overall like vibe of the knife, I think it works just fine. <laughs> But now I want to talk about heat anno on stainless steel and some of the issues that I had and, and the ones that I've had in the past. And this knife is a perfect sort of microcosm of all of the examples of that that I've really ever been through. So I want to talk about that for a few minutes because this knife, um, I think the mods that, that Nick had done, he had done the thumb studs, heat anode, he heat anode the hardware on the pivot and then also the clip, and then you can see the pivot collar, excuse me, that's not a pivot collar. <laughs> the over travel stop, he did like blue and purple. And he'd pushed to blue and purple with a lot of the anno that he did on this. And on titanium, not gonna be an issue. You know, if you're doing heat anodizing on titanium, it's completely different versus stainless steel. Uh, titanium, you have a pretty big window when you go from bronze to purple to blue to capture the color and really see how it's expressed, you know, and, and you can get the shade that you want and it has stability that with stainless steel, it does not. What I find when you're doing heat anno on stainless steel is you can find stability with bronze where that color will hold over time, but anything beyond that, it just does not stick. It'll like fade, it'll get spotty over time. Um, and you can see on this uh, over travel stop, you can see the color of the blue and purple, but it just isn't consistent, you know, and it just doesn't look like rich and vibrant the way that if you look at these like uh, screws back here, you know, that, that bronze really pops. And so that's one of the issues that you see when you try to push too far with, uh, with stainless steel. The other issue, and the one that I found a lot on this knife, is that once you hit it with excuse me, once you hit the stainless steel with with the heat once, it's very hard to reset it if you have to do it again and get a consistent kind of result. And if you're looking at the, the pivot on this knife now, I mean, I tried to do this bronze you know, after it had already been done once and it just didn't take a little bit of bronze color here, but this just doesn't really look good at all. And it's just one of those things where you can like take it apart and polish it and then hit it with heat again. And you might get a, a good look for a minute, but that just won't be stable all the time. Sometimes it will, you know, but there's variables at play here that I just can't measure and I can't figure out how to overcome. And um, even if I did know the science behind it, I'm not sure that practically speaking, I'd be able to to measure that and figure out exactly what to do every single time, if that makes sense. Uh, I mean, a perfect example. So I had issues with this pivot, but uh, the thumb studs had been heat anode and I was able to uh, to polish those down and then um, anode them again and get bronze. So it worked here, didn't really work here. Who knows why? Same thing with the clip. This clip was like a bluish purple and I tried to do it again. It just became like a grayish bleh. <laughs> and so what I did, the workaround that I figured out was, hey, I took a, a Dremel bit and I put all this texturing on it and basically removed the top layer of steel. And so that gave me the opportunity to have a fresh, basically, coat to hit with the heat. And that's why I was able to get a good bronze on this. But if you look, as the light hits it, you know, there's a couple spots where it's like grayish 
blue on the clip, just like it's not even really a color. It's just like a dead spot is what I'm calling it. And that is the original um, finish from the clip that's still left that wasn't hit with any texturing. And I think on this clip, it sort of looks cool and it adds to uh, the character of it. But, you know, when you're trying to anodize something over and over again, uh, that's sort of the color that you can end up with. And it doesn't have stability and it doesn't end up agreeing with the kind of theme that you're going for so often. So, yeah, just some, um, I guess, some obstacles in the road. And so my advice and one thing that I'm trying to do consistently is just stick with the bronze when I'm working with stainless steel. Don't try to push too far because if you're looking for a result that can last and that can hold up with stability, that's really the only way that I know of to do it. You know, and at this point, I'm going to have to keep working on this pivot to try to get a more agreeable and like consistent tone to the whole knife because, you know, this does not match this and it needs to. And even though, you know, the bronze did sort of take on the thumb studs here, you can see looking at the stuff that hadn't been anodized before, these screws back here and the standoff, there's a difference in the vibrancy between this and this. Can't explain it. And I don't know how to fix it. So just one of those things that you always have to have a good workaround and you always have to have a backup plan. You know, and my backup plan would be maybe to even etch these pieces and just go a different route or just polish them all up you know so you can always end up changing the whole game depending on what you need to do but that's sort of the breakdown guys again stay tuned um, it's probably going to be another few weeks maybe up to a month before i finish up the video with the complete tutorial aspect so if you are interested in that definitely stick around but any other questions comments complaints suggestions let me know down below any insight you might have to any of this opinions your take on it Glad to talk to you about it as well. Take care. Have a good one.